Hello all. Welcome to the exploiting simple buffer overflows on Win32 course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video we will look at overwriting the stack with user input. Now in the last couple of videos we've seen how the stack grows from high memory to low memory as we traverse from one function to the other and basically the return address, the frame pointers, local variables, etc. are stored on the stack and we've looked at how we can trace the growth of the stack. Now, what happens if the stack actually gets overwritten uh, while doing an operation of maybe taking user input? So one example could be using a function like gets which actually waits for the user to enter a string and then stores it inside a given buffer. So let's jump right in. Now here is the vulnerable source code. We have main just like in previous cases and we have function one and we are calling function one from main now the key difference is really just these three lines in here. We define a character buffer of size 10 and then call the gets function to ask the user for input which we store in buffer. Now gets is actually very very notorious uh, in the fact that gets does not check if what the user is entering is actually less than the size of the buffer. So gets would actually take whatever the user enters, in this case maybe of size 20 and then write buffer, write into buffer and if buffer is small in size it will write beyond buffer and corrupt the rest of the stack. So from the presentation let's say that this local variable space was taken by buffer which is size 10, gets would allow writing beyond buffer down below into the stack right if the user enters a large enough input now keep in mind that the stack grows from high to low memory while functions like gets end up writing from low memory towards high memory okay so the direction of overwrite is reversed to the direction of the growth of the stack and we'll see all of this practically in just a bit. So let me open up our good friend immunity and the program for this demo is called overwrite stack and it is available for download just below this video as a zip file so please download it and if you pretty much look at it uh, this is very similar to what we've seen before here is my function one, here is my main function. I call the main function from here. I've already added a breakpoint for this call, which you can do as well. And inside function one, if you re if you have a look, there is a call to the gets function here. And after that, here is the print. And then we again return from the function, right? So let's go ahead add a breakpoint when we call function one and then let's trace through this. So I'm going to hit play. We've ended up hitting the breakpoint. Let's step into it. Now the first thing we actually notice is that the return address is on the stack at the location 0022FECC, right? Now let's actually trace through step by step. Now the next call is gets. Now keep in mind this would go ahead and you know if you trace into it you would just end up going ahead and having to execute a lot of library uh, calls inside of this so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to step over it but when I hit step over, the program freezes to actually ask me for input. 
There you go. Now I can put in my input. Let me put in capital A A A A. Hit an enter. Again, we go back to immunity, right? And if you actually notice, these AAAAs have been stored on the stack, right? As you can clearly see in here. And now, if we actually trace through the program, step through the program, right? And if we continue, you'll actually notice the program runs perfectly, right? There are no issues in the program in any way. And you can verify this by running the program independently as well. We can go to my computer, C drive, program files, dev CPP. Uh, we can go ahead and run override stack, put in two A's and the program goes out comfortably. If you want to see the actual output, you can then go ahead and let me change directory. And then we can type in overwrite stack for DXE, put in a, 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 and it actually echoes that back to me, right? This is the printf statement. Now, what happens if we put in a very large value or a large number of A's, right? Instead of probably putting in the small requisite number. So let me first try this here, where I'm going to put in now a large number of A's. Right, and hit an enter. And if you notice the printing or the reflection of that happened perfectly, right? We got back what we put in, but looks like the program has crashed. And if you clearly see the offset of crashing is at 41, 41, 41, 41. Now 41 is nothing but the hex value of uppercase A. So looks like the program has crashed. Now let's actually replicate the same use case in immunity. Let me restart the program. We hit our breakpoint in main. Right, let me go ahead and continue running the program. Now we can go to the command line prompt here where the program is asking for our input. And let me put in again a large number of A's. If you notice immunity screams and it says access violation when executing 41, 41, 41, 41. And if you actually notice EIP has gotten corrupted with 41, 41, 41, 41, and the entire stack also has a ton of 41s which have been put in, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and analyze this a little bit more by single stepping through the program and see what happens. So let me run the program. I've hit my first breakpoint. Now let me single step. The call to gets, let's go ahead and step over. Of course, we'll have to enter A's. Now, let me actually go ahead and enter a decent number of A's. Let's put it in here. And let me hit an enter. Immunity comes back here again. And if you notice, my A's are on the stack as well. But the question is, are there enough A's so that they end up overwriting my return address, right? 
for this we are going to have to track the return address on the stack and see where the corruption can end up probably happening right so let me go ahead restart the program again and this time around let's trace the stack so here goes let's run the program it's already paused uh, let's actually run the program we've hit our breakpoint and now let's single step there we go so this is really the position where the return address is 0022 FECC fair enough let me get to the call uh, here and before we execute gets let's actually make a copy of the stack okay so let me go forward I'm here and if you recall right up to here was actually the return address which is FECC and this of course is going to go to 0015 uh, let me read the value out again it's going to go to 004015.7b which we could actually scroll up in here and verify that this is the very next instruction we will execute great so now let me actually go ahead copy this entire thing out up to here let's copy it to clipboard so I'm going to open up notepad paste it in here and I'm just going to say return address right let's not worry too much about all the other stuff in there such as the EBP and all that let's not worry about that now this is where we are you know when we've just called or we are just about to call the gets function now let me actually single step so now the program is running it's waiting for the user input and now let me put in a series of A's large number of them hit and enter go back to immunity and at this point let me go ahead and again copy out the stack right keep in mind we've just gone to the next instruction we haven't returned anywhere yet and if you notice the 41s are extending overwriting where our return address was which was 0022 FECC you can copy this out up to here and clearly our return address has been overwritten and compromised right and if you notice right now the return address uh, and above that you know other things have been compromised as well and of course a lot more of the stack has been overwritten right now if I were to go ahead and try and understand uh, really after how many A's my return address has gotten overwritten then that should actually be easy we can actually do some very simple address arithmetic and figure that out alternately we can probably put in a very simple pattern uh, which will allow us to track how much from the beginning of our buffer has ended up overwriting the return address so let's do that in the next run so let's rerun and restart the program so we hit our breakpoint again and at this point let's again step through it so this is where FECC is
right let the call go through which means we have to put in some input here now the input I'm going to put in is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then B 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then C 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 D 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 hit and enter and what we have to see is the place 0, 0, 0022 FECC and what it has been overwritten with so let's trace that through 0, 0, 0022 FECC and here it is and if you notice this has been overwritten with D123 right so if we go back in here right D123 these four bytes as what has overwritten the return address fantastic and if you do the math A to 9 is 10 B to 9 again is 10 right C to 9 again is 10 so after the first 30 bytes we actually have D123 which ends up overwriting the return address awesome so not just have we figured out uh, that you know we have overwritten the stack and the return address but we also figured out how many bytes after the beginning of the data which we are sending in has the return address been overwritten and this is something we will use in later videos uh, to do a lot of interesting things which would result in exploitation now apart from that here is another good thing which has been proved because of this little pattern and that is right the direction of overwrite if you clearly notice is from low memory towards high memory right and that's why you have a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right b 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 c and all of that going from low to high memory and this is something which we discussed right low to high memory but something which we have now proved totally beyond doubt that gets is actually copying from low to high memory while as we discussed the stack itself grows from high to low memory fantastic so try this out along with the binary available for download this is a very very important and crucial step in understanding buffer overflows so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and if you have, please do recommend Pentester Academy to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.